And good evening everybody and welcome here as we get ready for knockout qualifying for chase race number four here of the NSA Ray Hershey's Cup Series. It's time to go super speedway racing here under the lights at the track home of the blue safer barriers and the blue safety lines and the blue pit road. Yeah, it's all blue. We're at Army Digital Super Speedway getting ready here for 20 drivers to try and buy for seven spots in the starting lineup. We already got a couple drivers off track already. Joshua Michaels off. Matt McIntyre, Stephen Paul the third. There goes Zach Flickinger and Brandon Gonzalez. It's like uh, Seth Cole also coming out of the racetrack. So driver's going to get out and quickly make do of the opportunity of the five minutes allotted them, which is already down to four minutes and counting. One thing about this super speedway uh, that I like is this is considered an SS track. However, a lot of times with the kind of racing I've seen here, it doesn't always cater towards the SS type of racing, uh, especially in the turns. In the turns, this track is very much like a speedway with drivers being able to go three and four wide and not normally the number of cars on the inside line, outside line, wherever they all bunch up, being the line that moves. It's not exactly until just around the straightaways that you end up seeing the draft really kick in. Also, another thing about this track as opposed to most other tracks is the driver that gets out in front is usually able to control the draft, able to move high, move low, and not really allow anybody to make moves on them. Another thing about this track, too, is the low side doesn't exactly get that good a run off the corner. So if someone's going to make a move for the win, it may end up having to come from using the middle to high line. As fast as lap will be Joshua Michaels, 50.270. And Matt McIntyre just beat that, running almost a 50 flat. And, oh my goodness, wow, we've already got a car hitting the 48s, and that's Zach Flickinger. He must have gotten the draft off the 32 of Stephen Paul at the third or something. Yeah, that's exactly what must have happened. So we're already to the high 48s for lap times. Number of drivers still have to turn their first lap. Right now, things looking good for Flickinger to maybe make it into the main event. So there you go, Sam McMillan, 47. Same for Grayson Acovito. Same for Michael Norman. 47 sevens and 47 nines. I would be surprised if maybe they can hit almost 47 flats here in this session. And this time by Flickager, Pollard, and Gardner, they're not able to produce quite enough speed to get up the top two of McMillan and Acovito, but they're close. So we've got three drivers, make that four drivers that have hit the 47s now. Johnny Gardner now up in the 47s. Wrong camera angle there. Let's jump back, find that 41 car. Over Sam McMillan, there he is, working with Grayson Acovito. And they just beat their best time. Now they've run 47.6s. 47.631 for Acovito, 47.632 for McMillan. And with 55 seconds remaining in the session, things looking good for them, but they just got dethroned. Johnny Gardner, 47.181. Stephen Paul the third jumped to second. Johnny Gardner the third. So we've got a three-car pack and a two-car pack producing the most speed. Then John Cedino and Dallas McIntosh right now sit in the final two transfer spots with about half a minute remaining. Let's see if these two improve their lap time at all this time. And this time they do beat their best lap, but they're only in the 47.5s. 47.590 for Acovito, 47.524 for McMillan. But right now, situates them in a good spot. As the session's coming to a close, there's Cittadino and there is Dallas McIntosh right now in the final two transfer spots. It's Matt McIntyre, oh, 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 we just had someone jump up to the top of the board. That was Zachary Fitzwater and Brandon Gonzalez, also Cody Lamas, just jumped first, second, and fourth. 
And now Sam McMillan is actually out. Last minute move for those three. And Sam McMillan finds himself out and someone else just jumped up somewhere that was, uh, although it's McMillan, McMillan just jumped back up in and that eliminates out Zach Flickager. These two, are these three still on the clock? Are they gonna be able to run one more time lap here before the session's complete? Yes, they are, and they just beat the lap times again. 47.026 for Lamas. And it's looking like it's gonna be Pollard with the fastest lap, then Gardner, then Fitzwater, Lamas, Gonzalez, Acovito, and McMillan will get the final transfer spot into the main event. Look at that. I thought they were gonna just run 47 flats. Well, Steve Paul III, Johnny Gardner, 46.8 here tonight. And the session is indeed complete. So, racing in tonight's main event will Driver, be Stephen Paul III, car, Johnny Gardner, Zachary Fitzwater, Cody Lamas, Brandon Gonzalez, Grace Nakavito, and Sam McMillan will get the final transfer position. Now, normally we end up seeing uh, between 7th and 8th a very slim gap. Well, 3 tenths actually separated McMillan from 8th fastest Zach Flickinger. So, a significant difference right there. Dallas McIntosh will also fail to make the race along with Johnson and Nino, Joseph Strigley, Matt McIntyre. Jason Nelson, Seth Cole, Sean Galligan, Michael Norman, Chris Dowd, Austin Guype, Kyle Matthews, and Joshua Michaels, who I believe is the first one off pit road, never found a drafting partner, and he will not make the race almost a 50-second lap time. So, that is the session. Congrats to the seven drivers that make it. Let's get ready to go main event racing now here tonight at Armory Digital. And good evening, everybody, and welcome here as we continue on our chase for the championship here tonight under the lights at Armory Digital Super Speedway. This is Chase Race number four. Now, if we were using the current NASCAR Spin Cup Series Chase standings, then we would end up coming into this race with some drivers, four drivers to be exact, eliminated from the championship picture. However, that's not the chase we're using. We're still using just regular 10 race. Whoever's got the most points wins the championship deal. And so, drivers still have an opportunity to get themselves into contention as we are almost halfway through this chase for the championship. Getting ready here for 29 laps of racing. Hit strategy will definitely come into play in tonight's event. And it'll be interesting to see too if this track follows the usual do's and don'ts of restrictor plate racing. And if that's the case, we could end up seeing the big one take place here tonight. Ryan Acosta will line up on the pole position. Now Ryan Acosta's only win this season came at a super speedway track. That was the Great American Race Daytona 500 to start off the season. He hasn't been to victory lane since. Trying to pick up win number two. Alongside of Ryan Acosta, another driver trying to find victory lane for the second time this season. That would be Sam McMillan who comes into the race outside the top 35 in points. Was able to go to victory lane. I believe it was at, I want to say Kansas? Might be incorrect in that. But uh, Sam McMillan was really fast and knockout Q made his way into tonight's event. Looking for win number two for that 41 team. The highest starting chaser rolls off there on the inside of row number two. That's Noah Cars in the 42. And um, I'm going to just put this out there. Uh, Noah Cars specifically asked me to put him back in the Seattle Seahawks Chevrolet. Now the Seattle Seahawks Chevrolet was not put together. That TGA was not put together with the Chase banner and the Chase version. That's why I had everybody that's in the Chase basically with one scheme. But I adhered to his wishes, and so you don't see the 42 with the Chase banner on it and the silver splitter, but uh, that 42 nonetheless is in the Chase uh, for the championship. So starting off in the third position there, and comes into this race, uh, seventh in the point standings and the chase standings, 23 points out of the top position alongside of him, Zachary Fitzwater racing his way into this event. As a matter of fact, there's actually news that Zachary Fitzwater will be finishing out the season in a somewhat different looking number 76 paint scheme next week. So look forward to seeing that. Let's take a look at the rest 
of the starting lineup. Move on back there in the fifth spot will be Leon Alvarez alongside of teammate Mason Powers. Now Mason Powers lost the points lead last week. Now finds himself mired sixth in the standings, 19 points back after a tough race at Indianapolis. Trent Dunham will line up alongside Grayson Acovito, raced his way into tonight's event. Then you got a couple of chasers in this row. Jeremy Jones in the 18 comes in this race 10th in the points, 36 points back. And Joshua Circuli, two-time winner this season as well. Fifth in points, 16 points out of the top spot. Jessica Shelton line up alongside Rocco Twyman, who is right now ninth in points, 30 points out of the top position. There's Kean Eddington. He was running up near the top of the standings not too long ago at the beginning of the chase. Now he's sixth in points. Sorry, make that uh, seventh in the standings, 20 points back. Holden Gluba, Dylan Poti, you got to go back a ways before you get to Benjamin Miles, who is 10 points back from the points leader, third in the standings. Move further back, Joshua Lee is second in points, six points back. And there is your points leader coming to this race, Tim Walsh in the 15 car. Good run last week for Blaine Keys. He's now only 50 points back in the standings. Still 11th in points, though. Jake Baskager. He really needs a good run tonight to get himself back in contention. 63 points back after three races, and he is dead last of the championship drivers. There's Anthony McCrory, fourth in the standings, 16 points back. And here's the rest of your starting lineup for tonight's event. McCrory being the furthest starting chaser. Let's get the command to fire the engines up now here tonight at Armory Digital. Drivers, start your engines! There's the command to fire them up. And we're getting ready to go. Now, unless you guys were able to pick out what I was saying as far as points back and everything, let's give you a more organized overview of the points coming into this race. Tim Walsh is the points leader. Six points he holds over Joshua Lee. Third in the stands, Benjamin Miles. He's 10 points back. Anthony McCurry and Joshua Circuli are tied for fourth. They are both 16 points behind the points leader. Mason Powers would be 6th in the standings. He is 19 points back. 7th in points is Kean Eddington, 20 points back. Noah Cars is 23 points back. In 8th, ninth in the standings is Rocco Twyman. He's 30 points back. 10th in points is Jeremy Jones, 36 points out. And on 11th and 12th in points are Blaine Keys. He's 50 points out. And Jake Baskinger, 63 points out. Now, Baskinger is not eliminated from competing for the championship yet, but he really needs to start turning up the heat, finding victory lane, or finding the top five for the next few weeks to get himself back in contention. He also needs drivers that are running well in the points right now, such as Tim Walsh, Joshua Lee, Benjamin Miles, Anthony Curry, Joshua Circuli, Mason Powers. He needs them to run into trouble tonight. Super Speedway. Restrictor plate rules, so that's not exactly too far out of the equation. It'll be interesting to see today as well how much passing for the lead we'll see. We know pit strategy will come into play. Our driver's going to be willing to roll the dice for a trip to victory lane, whether they be a chaser or a non-chaser. Pace car peels off, and we're getting ready to go. Ryan Acosta, Sam McMillan lead us down. We're moments away from putting them under the green flag. Waiting on the flagman. They head into the restart box. And there we go. The green flag is out. We're underway here tonight at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Look at this. Look at Noah Cars. Immediately ducking to the inside line on the leader, Ryan Acosta, and he's not going to waste any time trying to go for the point. They're four wide further back. Grayson Acovito's kicked up to the high side. A couple of chasers in the middle of that four wide sandwich. Jeremy Jones and Joshua Circuli. Oh, and Trent Dunham. What's he doing? He's going onto the apron. Oh, he's going to try and bring it back up. Is he going to wreck anybody while he's doing it? No, he saves it, but he had to bring it to the apron. That's going to lose him a ton of positions. Emmanuel Hardnett also falling back. Last week's winner from Indianapolis. And there's another car on the apron. That's Rocco Twyman. Now, 
The only thing I could think of is maybe these drivers are going to the apron on purpose, purposely losing positions, so that way they don't end up getting involved in the big one when and if it might strike. They may be, may be uh, purposely giving up spots. Three wide, Cars, Powers, Acosta, with Jessica Shelton right behind, seeing which line opens up. She may try and make a line herself all the way to the inside. Ryan Acosta did lead the first lap of this race. Just want to point that out as well. As there you saw the draft come into play, going down the straightaway, Noah Cars was not able to get himself up to the lead. Mason Powers now slides around Ryan Acosta for the lead, and here comes Jessica Shelton. Might be a drag race, no it won't. Mason Powers will clear, and Mason Powers will get a valuable bonus point leading that lap. Whoa, switching of lanes there between Circuli and Zachary Fitzwater. One went the high road, the other goes the low road, and they nearly met betwixt and between. They're racing really hard further back there with Jeremy Jones, Grace Nakavito, Dylan Poteet holding Gluba. They're not exactly calm up here at the front either. Jessica Shelton, with the help of Zachary Fitzwater, pushed the Mountain Dew 0 2 to the front. By McIntyre getting wide off of that corner. Keeps it together, though. Oh, and there's Anthony McCurry darting down to the apron. As at the line, Jessica Shelton by about half a car length beats Fitzwater and Keen Eddington. And here comes the 33 to the lead. Let's jump back, find that 61. Make sure he did merge back onto the racetrack okay. Yes, he did. Apparently deciding to get out of Dodge at this point. The highest running chaser at this time right now is Kean Eddington. His teammate, Joshua Circuli, running in the third spot. Richard Childers Racing was really strong earlier on in the chase. They tapered off after a couple of dismal finishes last week. Whoa, trouble Dylan Poteet up into holding Gluba. And there we go, there's the wreck. Gluba through the grass. I saw Tristan Folks involved and they're still wrecking. Benjamin Miles has got damage. Someone's spinning back there. Damage on Richardson. Oh, that's Stephen Paul with the third who had to race his way into tonight's event. Ryan Madden's involved. There's Poteet. I think the contacts are between him and Jeremy Jones. And look at Benjamin Miles. Damage on the rear and front of the 25. Comes into this race third in points. The six of James Richardson badly damaged. Looking to see if anybody else may have been collected in that. As I scan the cars, doesn't look like it. Everybody else may have been able to avoid, and I believe it was the 18 of Jones who triggered that wreck with Dylan Poteet. So we are under caution for the first time here tonight at Armory Digital. Kean Eddington is the race leader. And now comes the question of pitting or not pitting. And it looks like the leaders are indicating they are going to come to pit road. Everybody's not going to risk it this time. They're all going to come to pit road here. Maybe with a, a sinking suspicion, they may go green the rest of the way. I thought we were going to be maybe seeing green flag pit stops instead of pit stops under caution, but as you can clearly see, that was not the case. So we'll follow Kean Eddington down to his pit stall. Now keep in mind, Ryan Acosta with winning the pole will have pit stall number one. We'll see if that plays a factor. And he kind of had to slow up there for the 33 of Kean Eddington to get into his pit box. So Maybe that might have lost Acosta a little bit of time as they go around. Two tires stop. Right sides only for Eddington. Same for LaPlante. Whoa, Circuli nearly made contact with his teammate coming off pit road. And Ryan Acosta is going to beat out the 33 of Eddington. So pit stall number one, winning the pole position, pays dividends for Ryan Acosta. He leads him off of pit road, coming out second. Will be Eddington, Noah Cars in third. Circuli comes out fourth. Looks like Austin LaPlante will restart in the fifth position. Let's take a look at a replay. What we'll put us under the caution for the first time here tonight at Armory? Here's what happened. Watch how close to the left rear 
Jeremy Jones is running on Dylan Pote. They just didn't give him any room. They must have locked bumpers. Pote gets sent down the apron. That kills his momentum. Comes back up again in front of Jones. And then Pote slides up and collects hold in Gluba. And then let's see where Benjamin Miles gets his damage from. Right, well, no, I thought it might have been for Tristan Folks right there. Well, there's a shot right there for Tristan. And then the six of Richardson had a lot more damage than I thought. Oh, wow, there's the shot right there for Dylan Poteet via Stephen Paul III and Ryan Madden. And there was also another car up ahead that got turned around. I think that was Cooper Siron in the 19. That was a shot right there, though, for the 31 to 32. Look at Pollard still spinning. Let's watch here. I, I didn't see. Oops, that wasn't meant to go that fast. I did not see the six car really get involved. Oh, there's where Siron uh, got involved. He got put in the fence by Brandon Gonzalez after he's kind of on the brakes hoping that Poti doesn't come back up into him. And then Gonzalez gets him in the right rear, turns him into the fence. But I wanted to see the six car because the contact between the 25 and the 17, I think that is what gave Benjamin Miles his damage. But I'm not necessarily certain where the six car comes into play. He's already got his damage at this point. So let's see here. Oh, it was right after the, the 25 of Miles got the 17 of Folks. Right there, there's where Miles gets his damage. And then right there is where Richardson gets his. It didn't look like it was that fast of a stack up to cause the six to receive that amount of damage, but apparently so. And so out of the chase drivers, from what I could tell, only one of them was involved in this one, and that was the 25 car of Benjamin Miles. And let's take one more look at this hit, this impact. Stephen Paul with the third going through the smoke. Can't see. Everybody trying to pick a line, and there's the shot. And, and a, another hit there from Ryan Madden. Oh, and Emmanuel Hartnett got a piece of that, too, in the 83. Got up and got the wall, too. So last week's winner from Indianapolis. Also getting collected in this incident as well. It's a tough break there for Stephen Paul with the third. He was the fastest in knockout qualifying. He was looking for a good run tonight. Possibly his second win of the season. Looks like the only place he's going to be going. It's not victory lane. It's going to be to the garage area. The lights just went out atop the pace car as the field crossed the start finish line. So we'll go back green. Ryan Acosta, the race leader. Ian Eddington lines up second, Noah Carr's third, Circuli in fourth, fifth, Austin the Plant, then it's Jessica Shelton, Zachary Fitzwater, Mason Powers, Sam McMillan, then the car that triggered the wreck. Jeremy Jones lines up in the tenth position. Five chasers will start, restart inside the top ten, three of them inside the top five. Drivers out of the race after what we just saw are the cars of James Richardson, Dylan Poach, and Stephen Paul with the third. The 11 of Rocco Twyman is now two laps down. And the only thing I can possibly think of that would cause that would be some kind of a pit road miscue. Let's see if he's still running or... No, he's on pit road still. And now just leaving pit road. So he is two laps down to the leaders. He'll still continue on, but problems apparently on pit road for the 11 team. This is not what they needed, especially with the momentum they've had so far in this chase. He comes into this race, currently situated ninth in the standings, 30 points out. And with the good runs being had by a number of chasers right now, that is not what that 11 team needed. We'll see if we can get word on what kind of a pit road problem it was for Rocco Twyman. As Ryan Acosta, with the benefit of the first pit stall, was able to beat Key and Eddington off pit road. And we're getting ready to go back racing here tonight at Armory. Single file restart, so we'll see how long it takes for him to all get three and four wide again. 
as they'll hit the restart box and Ryan Acosta gets us back underway. Lap eight complete, lap nine on the board. 21 laps to go. And look at Rocco Twyman, now Twyman, that's not exactly jumping the restart there, but he was trying to catch up to get to the inside line for the restart. And they went without him and now he's gonna be able to get by Ryan Acosta, and I believe that would put him at this point only one lap down to the leader. Now he's hoping for a quick caution flag, but it doesn't look like he's going to get it. Matter of fact, the outside line's formulating up. Ryan Acosta, Noah Cars, Key, and Eddington, and now they will fly around the outside line and put Rocco Twyman down a second lap. Noticing a couple of drivers working their way up here to the front we haven't talked about yet today. One of them the Motorcraft Ford of Pichu London. He's now worked his way into the top 10, drag racing to the line, and I guess he crossed the stripe in the uh, 11th position because they don't have him scored in the top 10. No, he should be scored in the top 10, though, I should think, shouldn't he? Or is he? Oh, he scored in, well, okay, there he is. He scored in six. They didn't update that very well for me to be able to see the 21 on the chart. Now we talked about Jake Baskinger, the kind of chase he's had and even needing a good run right now. He's up in the 12th position, working his way to the bottom on Jessica Shelton, Zachary Fitzwater, Jeremy Jones. So that 95 is coming to the front. We'll see if he can get up to the lead momentarily. Blaine Keyes had a solid run last week at Indianapolis, survived that race and Trying to follow it up with a good run tonight as well. Those two right there, the 95-48. Both come in 11th and 12th in the chase standings. They need good runs here this evening to even have a ghost of a shot of getting back into championship contentions. They're single file at the front of the field. And as soon as I say that, Mason Powers steps out of line. And he's going to get some help from Pichu London going for second place off of Noah Cars. All this going on behind Ryan Acosta. Daytona 500 winner trying to win his second SS race of the season. But he better look to his inside because here comes another driver who's been to a victory lane in an SS race. Two SS races, back-to-back -back wins at Tennessee and Coca-Cola. That's Mason Powers in the 44 looking for his third restrictor plate win this year. Dead even, heading through that turn and now down the back straightaway. Now the question is, which drafting line's gonna help? Outside line's got three cars, inside line did have two, but Pichu London bails and now Ryan Acosta will turn back the advance of Mason Powers, at least for now. Looks like he's got a buddy working with him here in the form of Noah Cars. Noah Cars doesn't seem too tempted to move by the 78, seems willing to stick to the back bumper and be the pusher which could be strategy. Noah Cars could very well realize that his hope of a good finish and finishing ahead of his fellow chasers is to push somebody else to the victory. And who better to push at a restrictor plate track than a driver who's got a win here? And I think they're decreasing their speed. I think we're under caution. We are. It's kind of hard with these lights here at this track to be able to tell if they are green or yellow, and apparently, caution flag is out for the second time here tonight at Armory. Let's see who is involved in this one. Looks like Mason Wood in the 14, potentially. The points leader, Tim Walsh, was in it. William Brock, Charles Sanford, they're on pit road. Holden Gluba. Oh, my. That is huge right there. The points leader, Tim Walsh. Cooper Siron, also another driver I didn't realize was involved. And there you see the smoke lingering. And it looks like we got some drivers that are gonna roll the dice and come to pit road this time in. Now they already pitted back around, I think it was lap six. But the RCR cars are coming to pit road. Ian Eddington giving up fourth. Joshua Circuli giving up eight. They're coming to pit road. Jessica Shelton's in. Comes Blaine Keys, Jake Baskinger, Gardner, Acovito. 
See who else is coming in. Like a number of others back there. Carson Scott, Cody Lamas, Dylan Young, number of drivers with very little to lose as far as traction. Benjamin Miles, Manuel Hartnett, Ryan Madden, Daniel Voiles, and Brandon Gonzalez along with JT Bryant. They are on the pit lane. So we're under caution for the second time tonight. This time, another chaser involved. This one, the driver who comes in first in the standings. Let's take a look at a replay of what happened. Watch left side of your screen. The seven of William Brock gets the apron, comes back up the racetrack, and we've seen drivers do this before, but normally it worked out, not this time. Charles Sanford gets into William Brock, turns him up into the wall. I might be wrong. Oh, there's the shot for Tim Walsh and Cooper Siron. Nowhere for either of those drivers to go. I could be incorrect in this assumption, as here comes Holden Gluba flying in. But wasn't the 7 and the 03 a couple of drivers that got together uh, two weeks ago at Taylor Swift Superdome? I might be wrong. Call me crazy. But I kind of think that was the case. That's so, there might be a little rivalry brewing there or something where Sanford didn't want to let William Brock in. And then the ironic thing is, I'm not sure, but I think the 7 was the one who got hooked off the 03 into the wall there at Taylor Swift, too. It was almost like a complete mirror image of what we saw a couple weeks ago. Except one was a short track, this time it was an SS race, and the impact was obviously going to be a lot more violent. But... Man, some hard licks there for Cooper Siron, Holden Gluba, and especially for Tim Walsh, who I think was just probably riding, trying to stay out of trouble. Not the case. At this point, we've had two chasers get involved in our first two wrecks of the evening. Those two chasers came into this race, points leader and third in the standings. You can definitely see that the chasers are getting targeted in tonight's event. Getting ready to go back green. The garage is filling up. We have actually got two of our chase drivers now officially retired from the race. Holding Gluba's out, along with Cooper Siron. Tim Walsh came in as the points leader. He will not leave as the points leader. 37th is where he officially finishes tonight. Charles Stamper, William Brock, 35th, 36th, and Benjamin Miles has finally taken his car behind the wall. He will finish in 34th. He came in third in the standings. Rocco Twyman is one lap down to the leaders. He needs a caution flag and needs to be ahead of the leader, Ryan Acosta. When that caution comes out, to get himself back on the lead lap. And wait a minute, Jeremy Jones, Anthony McCurry, are they, oh, they could be rolling the dice, expecting this to go green the rest of the way. Jones and McCurry coming to pit lane as we're getting ready to go green. This may not be bad strategy. A number of the leaders up here haven't pitted, and we don't know for certain the drivers that just pitted under this caution can make it the rest of the way. So maybe Jones and McCurry are relying on this race going green to the end. And if so, they may have enough fuel to make it to the end now with pitting when they do. Green flag out, and Ryan Acosta's out of fuel in front of the field. He just ran out of fuel. Oh, I'd be worried if I were these other drivers up here then. Oh, right, Noah Cars is out of fuel. And everybody's scattering. Circulate's getting held up. I think he might be out of fuel. No, he's... Still up to speed. Levi McIntyre looks like he could be out of fuel, though. McIntyre, Cars, Dunham, Acosta. They're out of fuel. Jones and McCrory must have known they couldn't make it. One more lap, and boy, are they the lucky ones to come to pit road, and that turns the lead over to the 33 of Kean Eddington. I'm not exactly certain why, if they just ran out of fuel, why did these guys stay out? Uh-oh, and this could bring out a caution with driver stopping on the racetrack. Oh, we had a spin! Driver upside down, that's Sam McMillan. And is the caution flag out as a result? Emmanuel Hartnett is on pit road. Or not, 
on pit road, but he's damaged, and the caution is out. Yeah, the Hartnett was on pit road. And now Noah Cars, Trent Dunham, they got to get back to pit road. Levi McIntyre, he's getting to pit road now, but I think he's going to maybe fall a lap down to the leader. I don't know. Maybe he can get there in time before the pace car comes around. Trent Dunham, I don't think he's going to make it. Noah Cars, it'll be close. There is the leader right there now. Right now, 42 and the 99 are on the tail end of the lead lap. They got to get these pit stops done, get out. They might still be okay. There's Hartnett on pit road. Trent Dunham had to teleport. So did Ryan Acosta, and Sam McMillan was upside down flipping. Looks like Mason Powers just made a pit stop too. That was a very timely caution for Jeremy Jones and Anthony McCurry as well. Oh, McIntyre better hurry. Better hurry. Better get to that pit stall. Better get that pit stop done because here comes the leaders. Oh, Ken Eddington's going to come to pit road again. Interesting. These guys were in last time by and now they're going to lap Noah Cars. Noah Cars running dry. Can't make it to pit road. And Levi McIntyre, he's coasting. I think he's come to a stop. Look out. Oh, no. He's backing him up. He's stacking him up. They're trying to push him to his pit stall. Oh my goodness, I've never seen that before. They had to push the 99 to his pit stall and he makes it. But Kean Eddington's gonna lose a ton of spots as a result of that. One thing to be a good Samaritan, it's another thing when the race is on the line. I think Jake Baskinger may win the race off pit road on this one over Johnny Gardner, but there were drivers who stayed out. And the race leader is going to be John Arndt in the 24. Of the drivers that stayed out, second place, Daniel Bouchard. Third place, Pete Julunen. Austin LaPlante in fourth. How about fifth place, Jer Joshua Lee? His two competitors for the points lead out of the race right now. Right now, he would situate in a very nice spot in fifth. Fitzwater sixth. And then these drivers had just been to pit road. Jones will restart seventh. McCurry in eighth. And ninth, Mason Powers. Jake Baskett, your first off pit road, restarting in the 10th position. So John Arndt leads the way. I told you it'd be a race of pit strategy, and so far, that's definitely what it's been. Let's see what happened to bring out the caution involving Sam McMillan and Emmanuel Hartnett. I think Sam McMillan had actually run out of fuel. They stacked up behind him. There you see Fitzwater, Leon Alvarez, and there's Emmanuel Hartnett getting squeezed up into the wall as well. And, oh boy, I thought Joshua Circular was going to get a piece of that. And then let's see what caused the 41 car to flip and go barrel rolling. Must have involved somebody else, but I'm not certain who. Maybe the 17 of Folks? Or did the 83 get back to his bumper? Oh, there it is right there. That looked like a score to settle. Folks just ramming the back of the 41 who was out of fuel at the time. Plenty of room to be able to get around. And then watch right here. Catches the racetrack just right. Flips the car up onto its side. And the car is going to weight distribute to the roof. Put himself more on his side, causing him to be stuck. And he had to teleport to pit road after that. Just doing a balancing act there. Huh. But I'm pretty sure McMillan was another driver who ran out of fuel right in front of the field. So, that's what put us under the caution for the third time here tonight at Armory. We've seen a little bit of everything. Now let's hope that we're shaping it up for a good finish. We have three more drivers that have officially retired from this race, including Ryan Madden, Tristan Folks, and Emmanuel Hartnett. Ryan Acosta has fallen three laps down after he had to teleport to pit road. I don't think he's even been able to come off pit road yet. Right now scoring 32nd. And then we have five other drivers off the lead lap that are still running. Levi McIntyre, Sam McMillan, Trent Dunham, Rocco Twyman, and Noah Cars. They all made it to pit road. They got their service done. They have continued on as far as I am aware. However, with it being less than 10 to go, it'll be nine laps remaining when we hit the stripe next time by. Make that eight laps. They will not be restarting on the inside line. So John Arndt rolls the dice, stays out. 
gains the lead over Daniel Bouchard, Pichu London, Austin the Plant, Joshua Lee, then it's Fitzwater. Those drivers stayed out. Jeremy Jones, Anthony McCurry, and Mason Powers all made pit stops under that green flag run. They still remained on the lead lap. They line up in seventh through ninth, and then Jake Bassinger was the first one off pit road of the drivers who did pit under the caution. He'll restart 10th. Here we go, green flag back out. Eight laps to go here tonight at Armory. Will we finish under green? Pichu London takes a look down to the bottom of the racetrack. Nobody there to help him, but can he do it on his own? All depends on where they all line up down the straightaway. LaPlante helping John Arndt up high. Inside line's got a number of contenders down there. Bouchard, Jones, here comes McCrory in the 61. Ooh, that's tight off that corner. That is really tight. Jeremy Jones, though, inside line committed right now. Looks like Anthony McCurry got a little loose off that corner. He's going to lose some spots. Falls back into the clutches of that second group. Here comes Johnny Gardner in the 12, and they're beating and banging doors there between Bouchard and Jones as Pichu London will go out to the lead. Little less than seven laps to go here. Let's hope that these drivers can finish it under the green flag. Shaping up for one of those great SS finishes. Look at some of these other drivers up here we haven't seen yet today. How about the Mitsubishi Lancer? Number 23 of Brandon Gonzalez had to race his way into this event. And here comes Johnny Gardner up the inside line for second place off of Jeremy Jones. So far, three chase races, two non-chasers have been to victory lane. The only chaser that's won so far in the chase was Taylor Swift Superdome, Anthony McCrory. We had JT Bryant win Chicagoland. Last week, Emmanuel Hartnett won Indianapolis. Right now, the odds are in favor of a non-chaser winning tonight's event as Johnny Gardner goes to the lead. What a power move as he will clear Pichu London and go to the top position. Trying to pick up Young Motorsports, third win of the season, but the first of his Hershey's Cup Series career. Outside line formulating there. Pichu London has found Jeremy Jones again. Those two trying to work the high side to run down the Mobile One Ford. This time by at the line, five laps to go. Here comes London with a run. Jones now leaves him out to dry though, and he'll cross over to go for second. Better look in your rear mirror, Johnny, because here comes Jeremy Jones. Little contact maybe there to try and move Johnny Gardner up the racetrack. Side by side. Down the back straightaway. Where's the drafting help? It's up high. Daniel Bouchard helping Johnny Gardner to keep the top position. Here comes Mason Powers to the inside for third. High side, Pichu London. Here comes Baskinger. You got three chasers. Right here in the mix, the 18, the 44, and the 95. Anthony McCrory is now finding his way back up to the front again as well. Also the five of Joshua Lee, the 27 of Joshua Circuli. They're not out of it yet. Breakaway at the front of the field, the top two. Johnny Gardner, Daniel Bouchard. Mason Powers now into third. Battle for fourth between Gonzalez and Baskinger. And look at the run, look at the slipstream of the 44. Huge run he's gaining on the top two down the straightaway. Now on the back bumper of Daniel Bouchard. Keep in mind, the 44 of Mason Powers has won two restricted plate races this season. He knows where to be. And there goes Bouchard to pit road. Now keep in mind, Daniel Bouchard did not pit under the last caution. There were a couple of them that didn't. And Pichu London appears to be out of fuel. I think he was another driver who may have stayed out. Oh no, he just went to the apron and let drivers by. Now let's look at this. Who were some of the others that stayed out under that last caution? John Art was one of them. Where's the 24? He's hit pit road. Same for Joshua Lee. Same for LaPlante. So the drivers who stayed out 
cannot make it the rest of the way on fuel. The question is, though, what about the drivers who did pit? Gardner leads the way. Baskinger slips to second. Shelton there at third. Now they're pitting! And that turns the lead over to Mason Powers. Now can these drivers make it? Oh boy, this is going to be very interesting. Two laps to go here at Armory Digital. Who's got enough fuel to get to the end? Here comes Brandon Gonzalez with Cody Lamas. Cody Lamas has won an S race, an SS race. The regular season finale at Eminem Super Speedway. And now he's up here in the mix. You still got Jeremy Jones. You still got Anthony McCrory. And there's Leon Alvarez in the nine. He's damaged, but he's up here right now running in the seventh position. Daniel Voyles trying to keep up. He's an eight. Is anybody pitting? No, they're not. They're gonna race it back to the line side by side for the lead. Brandon Gonzalez and Mason Powers. White flag displayed. One more lap to go. Mason Powers trying to become the first three-time winner this season. All three of his wins would come at restrictor plate tracks. Brandon Gonzalez hasn't given up yet though. He's still within touch. As now the two are single file, Slower machines up ahead. Fitzwater, Kean Eddington. Could they be the difference maker? Mason Powers gets held up. Here comes Brandon. Brandon looking low. Now he gets held up. Here comes Cody Lamas in the 20. He's going to go to the inside three wide. But can he get the run off the corner? Powers gets the run off the high side. Come into the stripe. Mason Powers is going to pick up his third win of the season. He takes the checkered flag tonight at Armory Digital. Third win of the season. Third win at an SS track. And you go back to our last caution. When it came out, Mason Powers had just ducked onto pit road. That signified he had enough fuel to get to the end and then he went right to work here on this final restart. Mason Powers is a three-time winner in the Hershey's Cup Series. Wow. And this is certainly going to help him out in the chase standings as well. Came into this race sixth in points, 19 points out of the top position. Brandon Gonzalez gave it all he had. So did Cody Lamas. They tried to use the lap machine of Fitzwater as a pick. It almost worked. But Mason Powers with the outside momentum held him off to get to the line first. How about Jeremy Jones and Joshua Circuli? Those two chasers with great runs tonight as well in fourth and fifth. Now, Circuli came into this race three points ahead of Mason Powers, but give Mason Powers the five bonus points for winning, and he will definitely bypass Circuli, so Circuli will not have any claim on the points lead. Neither will Anthony McCrory, who managed to finish in seventh. Leon Alvarez, that car was badly damaged on the rear. He comes away with a 6th place finish. McCrory 7th. How about Daniel Voiles? He was the last car to finish that didn't have to make a pit stop in the closing stage of that race. A solid 8th place run for him. First car that had to pit was Daniel Bouchard finishing 9th. Johnny Gardner in 10th. Baskinger will get 11th, so still a solid outing for the 95 team. John Arndt was out in front on the last restart, but he'll finish 12th. JT Bryant, that car had no hood. He gets 14th. 15th, or make that 13th rather for JT, 14th for Blaine Keys, 15th for Mason Wood, and then Jessica Shelton, Grayson Acovito, Carson Scott, Pichu Lunnan, and Joshua Lee. Now, Joshua Lee had an opportunity tonight to take the points lead over because of the hardships of Tim Walsh and Benjamin Miles, but he finished 20th, 20 spots behind Mason Powers, and he only came into this race a total of... 13 points ahead of Powers in the standing. So I believe, if my calculations are correct, Mason Powers with this win will take the points lead over heading into next week. As you look down here at the remainder of the field, 
number of drivers out of the race, number of drivers off the lead lap. Most notably off the lead lap, Noah Cars finishing 26th, one lap down. Rocco Twyman also a lap down in 29th. And then the two notables that finished out of the race, Benjamin Miles, 34th. And the points leader coming into this race, Tim Walsh, finishing in 37th. So Mason Powers becomes the first driver to hit three wins this season in the Hershey's Cup Series, winning his third SS race of the season. He won Tennessee. Following week, he won Coca-Cola. Here tonight, he takes the chase race of Armory Digital. Next week, folks, we're going to be going to the winding, elevation-changing road course of Lime Rock Raceway. That should be very interesting as the chase continues on here in the Hershey's Cup Series. Once again, we'll show you your full finishing results and we'll show you your overall points, dance, and your chase points heading into next week. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed tonight's race, be sure to give it, this video a like and subscribe to become part of the crew today because you've been watching a production of the NC Ray Offline Racing at its best. Good night from Armory Digital Super Speedway.